Voice, a slide and audio presentation by Ashley Faith Holmes. Introduction. Voice over Internet Protocol, or VoIP, is a major up-and-coming tool in the communication industry. VoIP has individuals and groups connecting to each other from around the world using a simple internet connection. Regrettably, VoIP's full potential is not known or being used by a fair amount of the world's population. This presentation highlights some positive as well as negative characteristics of VoIP and the overall goal is to inform a wide audience of the many wonders of this up-and-coming innovative product. Common terms. VoIP uses an IP-based packet-switched network, otherwise known as the web, to carry voice traffic. As shown in this picture, taken from Muhammad Alim's website, a packet-switched network is analogous to an information cloud where several digital lines of communication are gathered and transmitted to various devices. Next slide. When talking about VoIP, there are two other common terms of which it is helpful to become familiar. They are IP telephony and PSTN, or Public Switching Telephone Network. Next slide. IP telephony brings together an organization's dispersed locations and workforces with a solitary network. It is a component of VoIP that is dependent on VoIP's ability to manage call traffic and increase quality and user control. In this picture, taken from Alibaba.com, the Digiphone is an example of VoIP technology that is used for its IP telephony abilities to connect business owners. Next slide. The PSTN is the Global Network of Public Circuit Switched Telephone Networks. In other words, it is the old way of making calls. Originally, it was only capable of connecting landlines through an analog system, which is partially displayed in this picture from exegesis.net, a UK website. Calls went from your phone to a nearby telephone pole and then directly to a cable box where it was dispatched to the correct receiver. Nowadays, the PSTN is nearly 100% digital in order to expand mobility. Next slide. This history of circuit switching dates back to Alexander Graham Bell's patent for transmitters and receivers for electric telegraphs. This system used multiple vibrating reeds to make make-break circuits and employed the concept of multiplexed frequencies. A downfall of circuit networks is that they tend to be all-or-nothing networks, since they create a fixed path with a certain amount of bandwidth allocated for the length of a connection. This is costly to maintain because network resources are often wasted when the circuit is idle for a considerable amount of time. Packet networks address this issue by having multiple systems share a transmission path. Information is compressed into smaller bits to eliminate pauses and silent moments where bandwidth is wasted. Next slide. The concept of packet switching began to emerge as early as the 1960s. Paul Barron, shown here, is a Jewish engineer who teamed up with Donald Davies and Leonard Klinrock to expand the usability of packet-switched networks. The original packet-switching concept was susceptible to random link failures. To bypass this weakness, the network did not have a central control or administration arena. This meant that data had the option of following a number of different paths as shown in the figure, which was taken from tcpipguide.com. Barron's research led to the creation of ARPANET, or the Advanced Research Projects Agency Network, the very first internet. As the first packet switching network, ARPANET laid the foundation for the TCP IP network we enjoy today. While packet networks are great for data flow, 
They are generally considered cumbersome in regards to voice trafficking due to the variation of information routes and the amount of data clog on the network. More modern packet switches are capable of handling up to 100 million packets per second at broadband speeds. This reduces delays considerably. As time progresses, switches will be able to handle more packets at a time, making delays unnoticeable. There are, however, five common impairments or shortcomings that packet switch network users often come into contact with. William Hardy recognizes these as being noise on speech, echo, speech distortion, voice clipping, and conversation disruption. Next slide. Noise on speech is the circuit switch equivalent of white noise or static. It is generated by analog transmissions. The instance where there is an accompanying background noise when the speaker talks, but the noise disappears when there is no speech, is known as noise on speech. Next slide. An echo occurs when the transmitted voice energy is reflected during the conversion from four-wire transport links into two-wire subscriber loops. Lengthy transmission times over packet switch networks lengthens the path delay exceedingly more so than circuit networks. Next slide. Speech is distorted when noise is not adequately filtered or masked. It is difficult to fix this issue because lab testing is useless since the human ear and brain are resilient to a wide range of waveforms that are scientifically considered extremely deformed. Next slide. Voice clipping can be explained by the slow response or maladjustment of voice activity detection, or VAD processors. It may take longer than expected for the VAD to recognize a word or catch a soft ending. Voice clipping is not considered a major setback of VoIP, but with enough redundancy, it can significantly hinder a conversation. Next page. Finally, the disruption of conversational rhythms is greatly attributed to non-symmetric transmission delays caused by packets taking various routes. This can be seen in the figure. Note that the multicolored dashes are packets. Next slide. A major appeal of voice over internet is that you can use the internet as both a verbal communication medium and as a visual interaction tool. Also, Wi-Fi or broadband connections are preferred over traditional landlines. Financially, VoIP is a good decision since it is much cheaper to make calls, especially those that are long distance. Next slide. The quality of service is improving as VoIP adoption is increasing. Newer features are being added and older ones are updated and running faster whereas traditional lines are fairly static in the improvement field. The use of push directories is one advantage that is currently being used by some of the Mercer community with the aid of new IP-based phones. In conclusion, Voice Over Internet Protocol is a revolutionary way to communicate in this flattening world. However, VoIP suppliers are having a difficult time meeting the current technological standards expected of today's electronics. VoIP producers can begin to market their materials better through more customer-friendly incentives such as directory assistance and more reliable connections. This has been VoIP, a slide and audio presentation by Ashley Faye.